know, a pie. Aye, aye. Just find a mom and just wish him a happy Mother's Day real quick. Go ahead and do that. Happy Mother's Day. John, happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day. All right, maybe see that. And by the way, uh, all the ladies on your way out, uh, there's a gift for you. Uh, the ushers will give it to you. Uh, so we want to just uh, make sure um, all the ladies feel special today on Mother's Day. Uh, we know that's important, and so we're going to do it. That's what Pastor Renee told me to say. So anyway, <laughs> speaking of Pastor Renee, <laughs> she is at Faith Community. Uh, she's already spoken once, and I watched the first 10 minutes. She's just absolutely doing an amazing job. She did a great job. So I got about, I got about 10 minutes in before I had to leave. But she was great. She was uh, just uh, talking about listening and doing a fantastic job. So we're so excited. She's at Faith Community. And I'll be here uh, today. Just a couple reminders. Uh, if this is your first time here or uh, one of your first times here, uh, we'd love to um, just get to know you a little bit. And in the uh, brochure, there's a connection card. You can tear it out, fill it out, give it to an usher, put it in a box. That'd be great. Uh, if you want more information about Access Church, we would love to share that with you. So again, uh, if you want to do that, it's up to you. You can stay, you know, anonymous too. Uh, but if you want information, we'd love to give that to you. And then um, if you want to um, tithe, if you understand what tithing is, and by the way, you tithe to God through Access Church, right? Yes. Amen. You're not tithing to Access Church. I don't, That's right. If that makes no sense to you, I'm glad you're here. <laughs> uh, hopefully it makes sense to you if you're a Christ follower. If you're a Christ follower, I hope it makes sense to you. Uh, but if you do tithe, uh, we want to encourage you to do so unto God. We do. We give to God. We give through the local church. And you can do that through the boxes in the back there or the baskets up front. We really want to encourage you to understand what tithing is. If you've got questions about that, we'd love to have those conversations with you because we believe that part of the, um, the joy of uh, being a Christ follower is understanding the blessing of giving. And uh, the blessing of giving is critical to our lives. Uh, why don't we uh, have a word of prayer to continue to um, sing some great music this morning. Unto the Lord. Uh, Father God, thank you so much uh, for this uh, time. We can gather together on a Sunday morning and just dedicate this time to you. Father, to uh, hear, um, hear your word here in a few moments, God. I pray that you just make our minds and our hearts receptive to your word. And we know, God, that your word is transformative. Uh, that it cuts through bone and marrow. It cuts right into the way we think, the way we feel, the way we act. And we ask for that transformation today in Jesus' name. Amen.
understanding. You would bless your children and their children and your children's children. I pray in your household that you've started a legacy. That this is just not a religion. Mother's Day is going well, and uh, for any guy in the room, you know exactly what I'm talking about. See, Mother's Day is a celebration of moms, but it's a day of survival for men. <laughs> really? Our objective is to survive. Now, we want to thrive, don't get me wrong, but surviving is, is the baseline. That's where we start. Um, and uh, I've, got, I've got four adult children, all, all in the 20s. And I think this is the last year I had to do this, but I had, to, I had to remind them again this year. And I think they're okay now. Uh, but I, I got to remind them, my mom is with Jesus in heaven. Yes. Anyone know what I'm talking about? Yes. My mom is with Jesus. This is your mom. And the guy that's carried the load for decades, Right? Not caring anymore. Not caring. Come on, anyone, anyone bold enough to say amen to that? Any guy? Amen. Like, no, thank you. There's one. There's one. No, I did. I did get flowers for my wife. I'm not like Good you. job. Amen. Scrooge or anything. <laughs> but now, now my Mother's Day, I, I'm going to get to the word I'm excited about. My Mother's Day is a little more exciting. I almost said complicated. <laughs> My, my in-laws are flying in from Chicago Whoa. this afternoon, early this afternoon. We'll pray for you. <laughs> we get along great, thank God. We get along yeah. great. Yeah. We do. Yeah. We do. Yeah. So uh, I already got flowers to my mother-in-law. There you go. That's ready to go. Got a card already. Yeah. I got dinner going. Yeah. So uh, again, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to go, every now and then, Mother's Day survival, I think we're going on Thrive this year. Good we're job. Thrive, so. <laughs> so all you guys out there that aren't ready, God bless you. Thank you. Get your hustle on. <laughs> Do something. Do something. Do something. <laughs> hey, um, so I'm looking at uh, Pastor Renee in setting up this series on the Victorious Life. Ask me to speak about rest, and it's a theme all throughout the Bible, okay? I went on a wrap it here today. But let me start by this. How many of you enjoy resting? I okay. do. <laughs> I do. Preach it. How many enjoy resting? Right. How many of you enjoy it too much? So let's, just, let's just be honest. How many of you like, eh, maybe a little too much? That's my hobby. Yeah. You know. Now, now just, just so you know, the, work, the Christian work ethic, if you're going to follow... Uh, Genesis, at least, which we're going to kind of start with today. Um, God worked six days. Come on, someone's saying it. And then he rested, right? Six days. Now, I know in America, uh, there's a history, there's actually a history of this, but we, we have kind of a five-day, 40-hour work week, right? Well, that, that, that's something we created. 
Um, but uh, in scriptures, it seems to be the, the most rewarding rest would come after a, a six-day work week. Right. Well, that makes sense to me. If I'm hustling six days, I'm looking forward to day seven, right? To rest. Now, now, a lot of you like resting in different ways. Some of you like, you know, just give me a lazy boy chair, give me the clicker, and leave me alone. <coughs> Others of you, your idea of rest is being outside in the yard, maybe gardening or something, you know. Others of you, your idea of rest is a, you know, a resort for a weekend massage, pedicure, manicure. Come on. <laughs> Uh, so we're going to wrap that because oftentimes the, the biblical idea of rest is, is misunderstood. So I'm going to do my very best to unwrap that here today. And hopefully the objective here is for you and me um, is that we can enter into God's rest. Right. I'm not talking about death. This is pre, pre there. Okay. Uh, I know we say rest in peace. Right, let's tell you that. Rest in peace. We're not talking about that. We're talking about entering his rest here on earth. Now. Okay? Here on earth. Now. So if you want to follow along, it's going to be up on the screen. You've got an insert uh, if you want, or you just listen. Uh, but to the very first uh, thing we talked about here is uh, kind of breaking out rest, R-E-S-T, is R is remember the Sabbath. Remember the Sabbath. Why remember the Sabbath? Because the whole Teaching on rest starts with God resting on the seventh day of creation. And then from that, in the law in Exodus, we get this idea. It's in God's top ten, ten commandments, to observe the Sabbath, right? Let your body and your mind and your soul rest. One, two. So let's start with Genesis 2. One through three on the outline. And here's what it says as far as remembering the Sabbath. Where did it all begin? It all began in Genesis. And here's what, here's what the, the, uh, the testimony of the scripture says in Genesis 2. So the creation of the heavens and the earth and everything in them was completed. God created in six days, right? On the seventh day, God had finished. Everyone say finished. Finished. You've always got to connect resting and the work of God being finished. It's a real important. You've got to always connect resting and a work of God being finished. This can be true of Christ on the cross. Remember what Christ said on the cross? It is finished. It is finished. It's very important. And it connects. It's all connected. It's a thread all throughout the scriptures. So on the seventh day, God had finished his work of creation. So he what? Rested. Rested. Now, some of us, when we hear rested, we think God had like a heavenly, you know, lazy boy chair. Right? <laughs> or a hammock. There you go. Me, I do. And, thank, thank you. And God rested. That's what we think. That's our, um, that's our match. God was so tired from six days of labor. He's probably going, you know, God, what are you, 12 hours a day? 14? What do you think? 24. 24. <laughs> Who knows? But we think, we think, because this is how we live, that he rested because he was tired. And that, that's not what the scripture's saying. So he rested or ceased. Better way to say it is he ceased from his work. He stopped. He stopped working from all his work. <clears throat> he rested. He ceased. He stopped. <clears throat> and God blessed the seventh day. <clears throat> Excuse me. God blessed the seventh day. And declared it what? Holy. Set apart. Right? The word holy means set apart. <clears throat> That's why the Bible says, if you're a Christian, you're a holy one. <clears throat> Just turn to someone and say, you're holy. Go ahead and have fun. Come on, tell us. Tell them. <clears throat> you're holy. I, I know your, your immediate response is, no, I'm not. <laughs> if you knew me, <clears throat> you would say, uh, no, you're not. <clears throat> That's because we have a misunderstanding of the word holy. Holy just means set apart. That's all it means. Set apart. <clears throat> For the purposes of God. 
Set apart. Oh, God bless you. Right here, right here, right here, right here. Right here. <laughs> Thank you. I had one earlier. It just wasn't enough. Set apart for the purpose. You, as a Christian, have your life has been set apart. You've been taken out of the world into the kingdom of God, and you've been set apart for the purpose of God for the rest of your living days on this earth. Do you believe that today? So God blessed the seventh day and declared it holy because it was the day that he rested from all his work. He stopped. He was done. He was finished as far as creation. Someone said that there's never needed to be one more molecule after God finished on his day, on six days. He was done. It's finished. All that work for creation was done. And what that word means is he rested, he ceased from his work, and it implies that... Have you ever moved into a home? And when you move in, it's, it, it's no fun moving, right? Amen. Yeah. Moving is like, <laughs> moving is like, you know. Torture. <laughs> that's the nicest word I can think of right now. <laughs> but your goal when you move is what? What's your goal when you move? You want to get everything Finished. in its place. <laughs> Finished. So you can what? You Rest. can. Rest. You can settle in and start enjoying the house the way you designed it to be enjoyed and to use. That's what's, that's what's happening here. God has created the heavens and the earth and, and men and women. And now he can rest from his work and start to enjoy the purpose he set up the whole thing for. Does that make sense? Rest is always connected to finish. So, so God is settling into this creation of his. It's real important to get this. He's not tired, not exhausted from his word. He's, God. He's able to settle into what he envisioned with you and me and with the earth and with the heavens. He created earth to be a place where he can meet with you and me. It's almost, there, there's really what we call temple language in Genesis. Temple language. And of course, the temple for the Jews is where God met with his people. His presence was there. And there's really temple language here when it comes to the earth and the heavens. In fact, the Bible says that the whole earth is the Lord's and everything in it. That, that's implied here. Implied. So God wasn't tired. He just ceased from his work. It was all done. It was finished. And then he was able to settle in and enjoy his creation the way he designed it in the same way that if you move into a new place and you got everything organized, now you can settle in and start using the place the way you designed it to be used. That's what's happening. Now, go a little further on in the scriptures in Exodus. And when um, God laid out his top ten, right? Ten commandments. Ten, not, not the ten suggestions. Come on, someone help me out. Did God really say, well, it almost sounds like Adam and Eve, doesn't it? And that's what we do with the Word of God, don't we? Did God, did he really, I mean, God, it's it's 2021. Come on, God. It's different. If God said it, he meant it, okay? Right. If God said it, he meant it, and here's the good news. It's for your provision and your protection. You believe that? Yes. Any parents in the room? Mm-hmm. When you tell your child something, right? It's for their provision. Yes. It's for their protection. So if God said something. So this, is, this is God's top ten. We call it the uh, ten commandments. And in Exodus twenty, Moses is getting these um, these commands from God, these instructions from God on how to live in community. And by the way, if we live this way, we get along with people. You want to get along with people? Just live this way. Just obey God's word, and you will. They might not get along with you. That's what, folks. If someone doesn't like you, just give them a hug, right? <laughs> just love them. They'll, uh, they'll, they'll melt eventually. And here's what the here's what the Bible says: Exodus. Remember to observe the Sabbath day by keeping it holy, setting it apart. All right. You have six days each uh, each week for your ordinary work. But the seventh day is a Sabbath day of rest dedicated 
to the Lord your God. And the Jews, of course, took this very seriously. It's, and their Sabbath was what? From Friday, sundown, right, till Saturday, till Saturday, around, you know, 24 hours later. Um, so that's kind of what the Jews did. But based out of God in Genesis 2, finishing, and then the Sabbath being implemented by God himself, the Jews remember. So there's something going on here that God wants his people to get, Okay. And he's going to give them a physical act to do it to understand a spiritual truth. This is so important. Oftentimes, God will show you a spiritual truth based on a physical reality. This is why Jesus taught so often about uh, the crops and the water, right? He gave physical illustrations to, to, as a platform to teach people about spiritual truths. That's what God's doing here. So remember to observe the Sabbath, to keep it holy. You have six days each week from ordinary work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath, a Sabbath day to rest. Now, in the New Testament, every day is a Sabbath day. We're going to get to that here in a second, okay? As far as entering into and resting in Christ. But some people would say, and there's freedom in this, this is not a, a rule you have to obey, but some people would say it is wise to have one day a week where you physically rest from your work. You do something, it doesn't mean you're laying around all day, right? The, the idea of rest does not, does not mean you're in a hammock all day <laughs> or in a lazy boy chair all day. It means you're just enjoying what God's allowed you to create in your life. You're enjoying it, whatever that might be. And it's all different for all of us, right? But some people say there's wisdom in taking one day a week and just Relaxing, reflecting, reevaluating where you are in life, focusing on the Lord, making sure you're right with God. Right? One day a week. So, and whatever that might be for you. Now, for me personally, I like Monday. Mondays are my favorite day of the week. By far. I don't rest on Sundays. This is not rest. It's just for you. I know some of you think. I'd be crazy to pass what I do is talk 45 minutes a day and, and you're done for one day. That's an incredible job. What a great gig you can get. <laughs> but Monday is the day I rest, right? Which means I just I do whatever I got to do to enjoy my life. Enjoy the fruit of your labor, so to speak. Okay? To enjoy the fruit of your labor. And just recharge physically, mentally, recharge, emotionally, reevaluate. Make sure I'm going the direction I want to go. And then refocus. Make sure God and I are in a, a good place. I, I still think that's healthy, to be honest with you. Personally. Personally. You got to enter his rest. I, I don't dip into uh, E, enter his rest. Hebrews 3, 7 through 4, 11. This, this is an incredible section of scripture. If you have your Bibles, you can turn there. If not, again, I'm just going to read um, out of my Bible. It's not going to be on the screen. It's just going to say Hebrews 3, 7 through 4, 11. But the writer of Hebrews, who's talking to Christians, is going to talk about entering God's rest, and he's going to give a bunch of Old Testament examples that relate to us today as Christians. Okay? Real important. Real important. Get get this. So, let me start reading out of Hebrews chapter uh, 3, verse 7, and this can start out in... He's quoting Psalm 95, okay? He's quoting Psalm 95. But here, here's what the writer of Hebrews says to Christians of his day that relate to them, all right, about entering into God's rest, and it relates to us today also. So this teaching to the Hebrews is for you and for me. And here's, uh, here's what the writer says. Okay, he starts out quoting um, first few verses here of Psalm 95. He says, so, as the Holy Spirit says, uh, and I love that, because the writers of the Bible, right, were inspired by God. Yeah. And that word inspired means they were carried along as they wrote by the Holy Spirit. Do you believe that today? Yeah. Real important. It wasn't just, hey, I got a great idea. <laughs> just got to write this down. No. They were literally carried along by the Holy Spirit. So, as the Holy Spirit says, again, this is Hebrews 3, 7. Today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts. Very important theme. 
harden your hearts or unbelief, lack of faith, is going to be a theme here as we go through Hebrews. Do not harden your hearts as you did in the rebellion during the time of testing in the desert. Uh, how many remember when the Israelites, God freed them from Egypt? Remember that? They were in slavery in Egypt for 400 years plus, right? And God finally, you know, he heard their cries, and he finally set them free. And uh, they had a promised land they were going to. By the way, the promised land from Sinai in Egypt, right, to the promised land was about an 11-day journey. 11. Everyone say 11. 11. How long did it take them to get there? 40 years. 40 years. Anybody ever feel like that in your life with God? God's got a plan for you. God's got a design for you. God's got a ministry for you. And, and it should have taken like a year or six months or three months. And 10, 20, 30, 40 years later, you're still walking in circles. But I, so anyways, in Psalm 95, there's a reminder of what happened. Here's the Israelites. Well, they uh, were free from slavery, had a promised land of milk and honey. That means it was abundant with riches. Okay? Let me just make it real modern. It was, uh, it was really nice. <laughs> it was a part of town you wanted to live in. Okay? How's that? How's that? How, how's this? It was a part of town you bring your kids when you go trick-or-treating. <sighs> During the time of testing in the desert, it was 40 years, where your fathers tested and tried me, and for 40 years saw what I did. That is why I was angry with that generation. And by the way, that generation, for those 40 years, how many of them made it into the promised land? Water. Anyone remember? Two. Two. Do you remember who they are? Joshua, Joshua and who? Caleb, two made it in out of the whole bunch of that generation. And so the next generation is the one that entered in. Not that original one, though. So, verse 10, that is why I was angry with that generation. And I said, they're hard, to get heart issue, right? Heart issue, harden your hearts. This is a heart issue. Their hearts always going astray, and they have not known my way. So I declared on oath in my anger. They shall never enter my what? I rest. Okay. It's all theme, all about the scriptures. They're not going to enter it. And of course, this specific rest, again, a tangible, physical one, was entering into the promised land of Canaan. Okay? Entering into the promised land of Canaan. It goes on in verse 12. See to it, and this is again the writer of Hebrews, he just quoted Psalm 95. He's speaking of the right to the people in Hebrews, the Hebrews here. And now this relates to you and me also. Verse 12, he continues. See to it, brothers and sisters, that none of you has a sinful, unbelieving heart that turns away from the living God. This is, the, this is what we learn from the Israelites as they left Egypt and got stuck in the desert. They had an unbelieving heart. Okay? And what the writer of Hebrews is saying is this can be true for you and me also. Just turn to someone and stare at them. Don't say a word. You know, give, them that, give them the look, you know. This can be true for us. We can have unbelieving hearts. This is a New Testament message rooted in what we call the Old Testament. Then he says, verse 13, But encourage one another daily, as long as it is called today, so that none of you may be hardened by sin's deceitfulness. <clears throat> We do not want to flirt with sin, okay? Uh, let, let, me, let, me, let, me, let me get a phrase that might help. It's based out of uh, Genesis 3, where Adam and Eve bit from the fruit, the forbidden fruit. Remember that? He took a bite, forbidden fruit. God said, you can have anything you want in the garden, anything, except what? Isn't that just like us? Yeah, what do you want? Just don't touch that. We're like, why? Why? It, it looks so attractive. It smells nice. 
It looks like it'd be kind of kinesthetic, too, if I touch it. Enjoy it. Come on, someone help me out. There's a lot of places I can go right now. I'm going to control myself. I got another message just downloaded just this very second. But then here's, here's the phrase. We're, we're, we're real important. We know this to be true. Every disastrous sin starts with one bite. One amen. One amen. amen. Come on, some of you are Amen. If I got to say amen all by myself, I will. I will. I'll amen myself. Every disastrous sin starts with It always starts with, I'm just going to try this once. It won't hurt me. It won't harm me. I'm, I'm better than that. I'm stronger than that. I've got more willpower. But sin is deceitful, man. And it only wants to kill, steal, and destroy you. You might be playing with sin, but sin's not playing with you. That's right. I can close in prayer right now. And, and I know it's my own experience. My own experience. And you might be playing with sin. Sin's not playing with you. Sin wants to captivate you. It wants to own you. And I'm talking to Christians too, by the way. I'm talking to Christians. Now, we know Christ worked on the cross <clears throat> by the grace of God, man, is enough where sin is dead in us. Folks, if sin is re resurrected in us is because we resurrected it. The work of Christ, the work of Christ killed sin in us. So here's here's a phrase I like to use for me personally and for those I'm speaking to. If I sin, it's because I choose to, not because I have to. Right? You can't blame it on the dog. You can't blame it on your parents because they, you know, dropped you on your head when you were two months old. <laughs> can't blame it on your husband. You can't blame it on your wife. You can't blame it on the kids. You can't blame it on the boss. Folks, if, as a Christian, if you and I sin, it's because we choose to. That's right. Because the work of Christ has allowed us to live a life that pleases God. Yeah. You believe that today? Yeah. <sighs> Call today so that none of you may be hardened by sin's deceitfulness. We have come to share in Christ if we hold firmly. We have come to share. This is so, so good. Man. We have come to share. You know, it's so fun as, as a speaker. It's so fun to me when I see things I have never saw before until I'm actually speaking. And it just happens. <laughs> this is so fun. I need to take notes as I'm speaking. <clears throat> we have come to share in Christ if we hold firmly till the end. Everyone say till the end. This is a message all throughout the church. Yeah. To the end. Till God's done with us. Yeah. Till our last breath. Right? Perseverance of the saints. Till the end. The confidence we had at first. So here's what the writer's saying. Look, when you started out in Christ, you were on fire. Anyone relate to that? Yeah. Any lunatics for Jesus when you're a brand new Christian? Yeah. <laughs> Your friend said, gosh, I'm so glad you changed me. You are so Psycho. <laughs> I remember in high school I was a brand new Christian at age 17. And my Christian friends, right, who I just became friends with, new community for me, they pulled me aside about three months in. <laughs> it was too I love. I'm in high school. And they go, Chris, we're so excited, man. You're saved. It's so great. Go, yeah, isn't it great? You know. We're so excited you want to share about Jesus. I go, yeah, I can't stop talking about it. And uh, they go, you know what, though? You got to, like, we just, we just got to calm down. <laughs> I said, I don't think so. I don't think so. <laughs> I'll calm down when God tells me to calm down. And so far, he hasn't told me to calm down, so I'm going to keep going. <laughs> So he goes on to say this. So anyway, so we, I'm sorry. So the writer of Hebrews, they start out hot, and they were getting cold. Anyone have experienced this? Come on, come on. Yeah. Let's be honest. I and he wants to get them back to where they started. In uh, Revelation, we would call that getting back to your first love. Getting back to your first love. 
continues in verse 16. Uh, I'm sorry, 15. As, uh, as has just been said, and he's going to re-quote Psalm 95 again. Today, and, and he's doing this on purpose. He's speaking to his audience, and he wants to emphasize the today. Because the today for them, Ben, was our today now. Does that make sense? When he was speaking to them, that today meant the day they read this letter. For you and me, that today is now. So today. Today. Mother's Day. May 9th, 2021. That today. Today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as you did in the rebellion. Do not harden your hearts the way the Israelites did after God brought them out of slavery. By the way, when you're a brand new Christian, right, what did God do? He brought you out of slavery to sin. Do you get the parallel here? Folks, this is one message from Genesis to Revelation. One message the whole way. He brought you out. He says, don't harden your hearts as you did in the rebellion. Verse 16. Who were they who heard and rebelled? Were they not all those Moses led out of Egypt? Yes, of course. And with whom was he angry for 40 years? Was it not with those who sinned, whose bodies fell in this? Remember, uh, Moses was up getting the Ten Commandments. A little bit of a reminder some of you, and maybe something new for some of the others. And he came down with the Ten Commandments, and what did he see? He just left the people for a few days. And what did they see when he came down from the mountain? They had made a golden calf. And they were worshiping it. And Moses was so angry. What did he do? Took the tablet. He just threw it into the ground. He was so upset. I've just left you here a few days. So you guys, are, you're, you're, you're rebellious. You're sinful. Now, let me just say this. Before we judge them too harshly. Folks, if you separate from fellowship with other Christians for too long, I, I, and I can't speak for the ladies, I'll speak for the guys. Guys, we are three days away from a really bad decision. <laughs> Come on, man. I, I need one amen from a guy, two from ladies, you know. Amen, amen. Come on, man. Thank you, brother. We need connection. We need one another. We need the fellowship of the saints. You need to be in the Word of God in prayer. Moses left just for a few days to be with God. And he came back, and they were already committing idolatry. Idolatry, my. And who knows what else is going on? Because with idolatry comes every other sin. Some of you need to take that home. With idolatry, once you get your eyes off the true God, put your eyes on some other God. Every other sin follows idolatry. Mm -hmm. That's the way it works. So this was a rebellious people in the desert. So we see, verse 19, so we see that they were not able to enter because of their unbelief. They were not able to get into the promised land because of their unbelief. Now, so they went from slaves in Egypt. God set them free by the work of Moses, by, by God himself, who was with them. And they were on the way to the promised land. And they came out by blood, by the way. Remember? Remember the doorpost? Anybody? Oh, yeah. Remember? Yeah. God was going to... Pharaoh would not listen to God. God said, through Moses, set my people free from slavery. And Pharaoh said, you're God? I'm God. That's Pharaoh. You got it, God? I'm God. That's what Pharaoh said. Pharaoh believed that he was God in that situation. And he refused to let people go. So finally, God brought the, the death angel, and the Israelites were instructed to put um, a, a blood over the doorpost so that the firstborn would be spared. Right? They came out through blood. And they came through water. Right? They came through. Who, who, who knows? Remember what water was parted for them? The Red Sea. Then later it would be the Jordan, you could promise that. But the Red Sea, God parted through blood, through water. Christ's blood, water baptism. Folks, this, this is one story. This whole thing is one story. It's one story told to different generations, and God developing the story for you and for me. And God has this plan that's been in the beginning. 
Started from the very beginning. It goes all throughout the scriptures. Do you believe that today? Do you believe that today? So go on in verse uh, chapter 4, verse 1. To wrap this up, this, uh, this part up. Therefore, since the promise of entering his rest still stands, okay? Still stands for you, for you. Still stands. Let us be careful that none of you be found to have fallen short of it. So here's, here's the question for you and for me today. Where is your heart today? Is it with God? Is there anything in your heart or my heart that's keeping us separate from God and His will? This is real important. Real important. Now, I know just odds in a room like this, there's going to be at least one or two, right? Just odds. Sociologically, just one or two. But we got to all check our hearts on a regular basis to make sure we're right with God. To make sure we're right with God. Because in the same way, those people in the desert fell short. It can happen to us. We're not, we're not um, an exempt from this. For we also have had the God. Now look at look how it ties. This, this, this to me is a theological gold mine, right? I'd love to spend a month studying this. Here's, here's how he ties in verse, verse 2 of chapter, chapter 4 in Hebrews. For we also have had the gospel preached to us. We also. Everyone say also. Also. In, impl, implied is they did back then. Why? It's all one story. It's all one story. Now, Christ came for a very specific purpose. Don't get me wrong. But there was the same story happening back then. God was just developing the story to its culmination in Christ, and then ultimately when he comes back a second time. Right? Everything's going to be wrapped up at that point. Forever and ever and ever. Amen. For we also have had the gospel preached to us, just as they did, but the message they heard was of no value to them, because those who heard did not combine it with what? Faith. Right. And the Bible says it's impossible to please God without faith. You can't rest in Christ unless you have faith. And the Bible also says this. With God, all things possible. When you believe in God, all you need is the faith the size of a mustard seed, which is tiny. Right? Now, the tree itself gets pretty big. But the seed itself is tiny. With a mustard seed faith, the Bible says you, God through you, can move mountains. Do you believe that today? So faith is the issue. Our heart is the issue. But they didn't combine it with faith. They heard the word, but they didn't combine it with faith. They didn't believe it. They didn't believe it. Right? Every now and then I hear people say, oh, I love, I don't know, we'll just throw something out. I love fishing. I love fishing. I go, you love fishing? Yeah, I love fishing. When was the last time I went? About 30 years ago. I'm like, you don't love fishing. You love the idea of fishing. Come on, someone help me out. And I think some people are that way with God. I love God. Really? Are you living for him? No, I, I guess I love the idea of God. Oh, there's just a huge difference. The Bible says even the demons believe. Right. And James is like, whoop de doo You have faith? Okay. I want to see work for your faith. I want to see evidence for your faith. I don't, want, I don't want my kids to tell me they're going to clean the room. I want the room clean. Amen. Come on, there you go. I'm reaching the hearts now, right? <laughs> I don't want to know they want, they're going to clean. I want the room clean. And God's kind of that with us. He's, he's a great parent. Now we have believed. Now we who have believed enter that rest. And for us New Testament Christians, we say we're in Christ. We are not in Christ. Just as God has said, so I declared on and open my anger, they shall never enter my rest. But we who believe have entered. We enter his rest. Just a few more verses here in Hebrews 4. And yet his work has been finished. <laughs> Here's God resting in the finished. And yet his work has been finished since the creation of the world. Now, wait a minute. What, what, what's going on here? There's a real strange verse. It says Christ was crucified from the foundations of the earth. And when you read that and figure it out, let me know so I can preach it one day. Okay, teach it. It's interesting. It's interesting. You got you understand, God is not bound by time. He created time, he lives outside of time. So everything's now for him. Okay. 
and his work has been finished since the creation of the world. For somewhere, somewhere he has spoken about the seventh day in these words. And on the seventh day, God rested from all his work. And again, in the passage above, he says, they shall never enter my rest. So the writer of Hebrews is connecting the work of God in Genesis 2 to what happened with the Israelites in the wilderness, okay? And then with us today. Psalms 95 today was the Hebrews writer today and it's our today today. Hope that makes sense to you. This gospel, this powerful gospel. Verse 6, it still remains that some will enter that rest. Praise God. And those who formerly had the gospel preached to them did not go in because of their disobedience. Therefore, God again said a certain day, called it today. When a long time later, he spoke through David. As he said before, today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts. I'm going to stop right here. About halfway through. That's enough right now. More than enough. But, but here's the message on rest. It's something, once you, once you rest in God, trust God through Christ, you can cease, you can cease from your labor. And let me just end with this idea uh, that I'll develop the next time I come in. All the work that needs to be done for your salvation has been done by Jesus Christ on the cross. There's nothing you can do to be right, to make yourself right with God. Amen. Now, God prepared in advance for us good works to do as an evidence of fruits and a joy of our faith. But as far as being right with God, you guys rest in the work of Jesus Christ on the cross and have faith that his work on the cross satisfies the justice of God, and that God says if you believe that Jesus' death on the cross is enough for your sin to be forgiven and you to be in right relationship with God and you trust him for that, you are resting in Christ. You are believing God. You are trusting God. You, you have a heart that's open to God. Do you believe that's it? Okay. Yes. Folks, this message is from the very beginning. Now, we felt we're pretty, we're pretty New Testament-centric in 2021 in the church, um, which is a great place to start. <laughs> Everyone say a good place to start. Good place, good place to start. start. But we have 66 books in our Bible. Amen. And, 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 and the more we understand all 66 and read them and study them, the more, the more alive the New Testament becomes. When you understand the Old Testament, does that make sense? Yeah. Now I'm not saying you can't. I mean, when I when I came to Christ, I knew nothing about the Bible. I did not know John three sixteen. Okay, I didn't know that, and I was alive in my spirit. But the more I was able to connect the whole story of God from Genesis to Revelation, the more the death of Christ on the cross made sense to me, and the more precious it became. Well, let me pray for you. And I'll let you go celebrate Mother's Day. <laughs> Again, some of you, you got to get your hustle on, man. Get going. Come on. So others of you, you're way ahead of the game. Yeah, you got uh, Father God, thank you so much, every person here. God, I'm grateful for, uh, for your word. I'm so grateful for this idea of rest, Father. Uh, Father God, as you rested on the seventh day, Father and now you want us to enter into your rest through Christ. We can do that. We can do that. We can cease from our, our idea of earning our salvation. That's, that's, a, that's over. We can just rest and trust you. There's the work of Christ. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Why don't you stand? I've got a, a blessing. Pastor Renee likes to end with a blessing. I want to give that to you. Uh, before you leave here. And just a reminder, as you leave, late, all ladies, I'm going to say all, oh. <laughs> all ladies, there's a, a special gift for you on behalf of Mother's Day as you leave. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace in Jesus' name. Have a great day. Amen. Yeah. Amen.